Super Nintendo games usually only have one or two ROM trips, but Neo Geo games have a whole bunch. Heck, they need two PCBs just to hold them all. What gives? This becomes apparent if you've ever unzipped a Neo Geo ROM bundle. Each file corresponds to one chip on the game's boards. Let's go over them one by one. The PROM holds the game's code. This code will be executed by the Motorola 68K processor, the main CPU of the Neo Geo. It also holds the game's data, such as the levels. I always remember this one with P standing for program. PROMs are limited to one megabyte. But some games have two or more that they swap in and out. Such as King of Fighters 2003 here, which has three. The MROM also contains code, but this time it's for the Z80 Sound CPU. This is the game's audio driver. It's responsible for working with the sound chip to play music and sound effects. The main game code in the PROM sends commands over to it whenever the game needs something to happen audio-wise, such as playing a sound effect or switching the music track. You can think of M as standing for music. The VROMs contain audio data, such as music tracks and samples. The audio driver in the MROM will use these to feed data to the sound chip. To remember, V can stand for voices. That one is a bit of a stretch, but it does work, at least for me. These chips store the sprite graphic tiles. They always come in pairs because the graphic tiles were split in half and stored across two ROMs. Early, smaller games just have a single pair of CROMs while later games have many, such as King of Fighters 2003 here, which has 8. These chips can be big boys, topping out at 8 megabytes each. King of Fighters 2003 has a whopping 64 megabytes of graphics data. In later games, this data was encrypted in an attempt to thwart piracy. C probably stood for character, which is just another term for tile. This chip contains 8x8 graphic tiles that will be placed on the fixed layer. These graphics were for simple things like health bars and coin counters. Starting with King of Fighters 99, the fixed tiles were stored along with the sprite tiles in the C-ROMs, so later games don't have a separate S-ROM. The S-ROM is limited to 128 kilobytes in size, but some games use some clever bank switching to allow up to 512 kilobytes. I use the word static to remember this one, since the fixed layer never moves. But that's just me. As far as I know, SNK never stated what the S stood for. The game boards also had other chips, which were used to perform things like decryption, bank switching, and more. I'm not going to cover them in this video, but maybe we'll take a look at them later in the series. That about covers it. To wrap things up, here's a little cheat sheet to help you remember the different types. I also linked to it in the description. Thanks for watching. This was a quick one. In the next episode, we'll take a look at how the Neo Geo does graphics. Until next time!